Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini, and in this video tutorial, I'm teaching you how to make my strippy fabric baskets. The first step is to prep your cotton fabric, make sure there's no wrinkles. I like to starch, but you can also just steam press your fabric nice and flat. Now, before we move on, it's important to note that this pattern does require a PDF downloadable template that I've created for you. So make sure to check the video description box below. That will have the link on where you can go to download the template you'll need to complete this project. Now back to the fabric prep. You'll want to cut up your fabrics into two inch wide strips. I happen to be using five different cotton prints here that are a holiday theme, so I know they'll go good together. As I mentioned earlier, this is a scrappy project and the scrappier it is, the better it will turn out. Once you've cut up your fabric into two inch wide strips, I want you to go in and sub cut them to seven inches long. So these two inch by seven inch strips will make up the exterior outside portion of our baskets. Then when you have all that cut up, go ahead and lay them out in a strip of nine in whatever color combo you would like so nine strips across then we're going to head over to the sewing machine so we can piece these together using a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance quilter style for a scant quarter inch just sew a little bit narrower than an actual quarter of an inch seam allowance here but not quite an eighth of an inch keep in mind that if you sew too big of a seam allowance at this step you're going to end up with a panel that's way too short for what we need then I like to press those seam allowances to one side and set everything nice and flat with my Taylor's clapper. And then we're going to measure this. So grab your ruler. The panel should be seven inches tall because that's what your strips were cut to. And then this way it should be 14 inches long. If yours does not measure 14 inches, it's because you likely were off in the seam allowance. You either sewed too big or too small of a seam allowance. So go ahead and make the second panel again made up of the nine strips put together and try to sew that perfect scant quarter of an inch seam allowance to make sure your panel measures 14 inches long. Once your two panels are pieced together, they should measure seven inches by 14. And then we're gonna grab our stabilizer. I'll be using Bozal Inner Form, the sew-in version. And we sell this in our online shop in a couple of different sizes. So check the link in the description box below. Then I place my panel on the Bozal Inner Form and I'm gonna rough cut it just so that it extends past my fabric panel a little bit because the next step is going to be to quilt it. The quilting here means that I'm going to stitch through both layers. So I lengthen my straight stitch to 4.5 millimeters, as you can see on the sewing machine screen. And then about every two or three inches or so, I'm just gonna do a straight line down. You can get fancy if you'd like to, but really at the end of the day, we're just trying to permanently attach the fabric panel to the inner form product. The best tip I can give you for this step is to make sure that you smooth out the fabric from the center out before you go in and stitch these lines because otherwise you might end up with a bubble right in your fabric panel. All right, so once that is done, you're going to repeat it obviously to the second exterior panel there. And then I like to go back in and do a quick basting stitch around the outside, all four sides of the fabric to the foam panel. This is going to make it a little bit easier to not have any lifted up fabric along the edges. And it gives us an edge to follow when we go to trim away the excess inner form stabilizer. Next, you go in with a ruler and your rotary cutter and carefully trim away any of the excess Bozal inner form stabilizer that's sticking out around all four sides. Once you have that, grab your rulers again and double check and measure that each panel still measures 7 inches by 14. All right, so by now I hope you use the link I put for you in the description box below to download the PDF template that you'll need to move on and continue with this project. Make sure that you're printing the template at 100% scale and that one inch square that I included there for you should measure exactly one inch by one inch. That way you'll know that it printed out at the correct size that you'll need to complete this project. Use the template and carefully cut out one exterior piece of fabric that you want to display on the outside bottom of your strippy fabric basket. Then let's do the same thing with this piece of fabric. Place it over top of the foam stabilizer, rough cut around it, do some quilting through it. I like to still baste around the outer edges and then trim it up like we did the other two panels. Now take both exterior panels, put them together with pretty sides touching and place some plastic clips along the two short edges because that's where we'll be sewing next. With a short stitch length, use a half of an inch seam allowance this time, back stitching at the beginning and at the end, and go ahead and stitch down both short sides through both layers. Then I like to carefully press those side seams open. Now we're ready to move on to constructing the exterior. So take your bottom panel and fold it in half so that you can find the center of the two short sides. I just do it on one side and then kind of transfer the mark over to the other side. Then we're going to use those marks to align the side seams from our main exterior panel here. Place your clips on those two spots first, then work your way around the remaining raw edges. Notice that everything is pretty sides touching. Place your plastic clips until everything is in place. 
Now at the sewing machine with a short and straight stitch, I like to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance here and then just carefully work my way around removing the clips as I reach them and sew these panels together. All right, that looks really good. And notice that I sewed it so that the side seams were still pressed open. That's gonna help things lie a little bit flatter and will help you reduce bulk. So keep an eye on that. Now we're on to the boring part, the lining. Make sure you have that printed template handy because you'll need to cut out one from your lining fabric. I also cut two lining pieces at seven inches by 13 inches long. And if you've seen how nice and snug my lining fits inside the baskets, it's because of this. We need the lining to be smaller. So take all three lining pieces now and we are also gonna give them a little bit of body by fusing them to this Bozal Fashion Fuse. This is a cotton woven fusible interfacing product. I place the fabric right on top with the scratchy side of the interfacing facing up, rough cut around it, and then we're gonna press and fuse them together using our iron and ironing board. Now I take both lining panels, put them together, pretty sides touching, and place pins along the short sides only. Use a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but make sure you also leave an opening in the middle of one of those short sides of your lining fabric. I say between five and a half to six inches is good. Then I like to press the edges of the seam allowances back in order to press the seams open. And then we're ready to mark the side centers on the bottom of the base piece so we can put these two sections together the same way we did the exterior quilted panels. Then stitch this section together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and just be careful in those corners. If this is new to you in terms of sewing techniques, take your time and just lift that presser foot up with the needle down as you kind of work your way around those trickier rounded corners. And that looks pretty good to me. Make sure you have a hole on one of the sides just like I do here. Let's set this aside and now we need to make our handles. Handle fabric strips were cut three and a half inches by 15 inches. We're gonna fold it in half lengthwise. Pretty sides of the fabric are facing out. Set that crease with my clapper and then when I open it, let's fold in the outer long edges just shy of that center crease line. Press that again, repeat on the other side and to give it a little bit of body, I'm going to insert a strip of inner form foam stabilizer that we've been using here already. I cut it 5 eighths of an inch wide by the same 15 inches long. I insert it right here in the middle place my clips, and then I'm gonna repeat this to make a second handle, and we'll top stitch it down at the sewing machine. Give the handles a really good press on both sides and double check that they measure the same length. If they don't, trim them up so they're equal, then grab the exterior part of your basket. My preferred handle placement is three inches into the middle of the bag from the side seam. Make sure that you're measuring from the correct side seam if you have extra basting stitches and stuff. So just three inches in, I make a mark on the foam side because it's easier to see. Then we'll position the handles to the inside of those marks because you want the pretty side of the handle fabric touching the pretty side of the exterior, just like you see here. And notice that I'm positioning the handles to the inside of the marks that I've made. So the mark is three inches in, but the handle should be further in because you're placing them on the insides of those marks. Then head over to the sewing machine so you can base these in place using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Looking good and we're almost done. Flip your lining right side out or pretty side facing out and push out all the corners of the bottom base panel portion of it. Then I'm gonna slip it inside of the exterior. Notice pretty sides of lining touching pretty sides of the exterior. Match up the side seams and place your pins or clips there first. Then we're gonna work our way around matching up the raw edges of both all around the top edge of our project. Remember that you should have an opening along the side seam of the lining fabric, otherwise you're not really gonna have a way to turn out your project through. So make sure that the handles are smooth and straight and they are in between your lining and exterior panel. Place all your clips and then we'll head over to the sewing machine to stitch it up. Using a short stitch length, a straight stitch, and a quarter of an inch seam allowance, we're stitching all the way around the top circumference of the bag. Make sure to remove those clips or pins as you reach them.
Now reach in the opening that you left in the lining and carefully pull everything right side out, stuff the lining back inside, and then press, press, and press some more to make sure everything is where it needs to be. At this point is where I like to close up the hole that we left in the lining. You can do this by machine or stitch it closed by hand. Either way is fine. Now having inner form in that top seam we just sewed can be a little bulky, so I place my clips around the top edge like this to keep the lining down and in. Now we're going to top stitch with about a 3.5 to 4 millimeter stitch length, a quarter of an inch in, that's the seam allowance we're using around the entire top circumference of our basket. And here it is, y'all, my finished strippy fabric basket. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you need the PDF template, make sure to click on the link that's in the description box below so you can head over there and get it. If you don't know where that is, just click around down there. You should be able to find it pretty easily. Now, if you need the interfacings or the inner form product that we use in this video, head on over to our shop. The links to that are below as well. If you're a beginner and you don't feel comfortable tackling projects like this just yet, consider signing up for some of my online paid courses where I go way more into depth and walk you through every single step. It's more like a hand-holding tutorial than you might like those. The link for that is below. You can also shop with us at craftygemini.com shop. Hope everybody enjoyed this video. Let me know what you're going to use your baskets for, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.